Well, good afternoon and welcome to the 2021 Golf's London Sale. Not as we had initially hoped coming from Kensington Palace Gardens in the northern corner of Hyde Park, but coming through the Golf's online service that has been such part of our offering over the last 18 months. We have a sale that will start today at 1 p.m. We offer 11 horses, all of whom carry entries at Royal Ascot, four of whom are already declared to run on Wednesday. We'll be joining Mike Catamull before the sale starts over in London. He's at a lunch being hosted by GBRI and Goffs at Daphne's restaurant in Kensington, in Knightsbridge, I believe. And I'm joined here by Kevin Blake, the well-known international TV racing pundit. And Kevin and I will be going through some of the horses here. Kevin, you're very welcome, and uh, welcome to Goffs Online, the London sale. Thank you, Nick. A, a real privilege to be involved in a sale that, in a very short space of time, has become such a part of Royal Ascot Week. You know, this is one of the great weeks in world racing, and it's a, a very small involvement, but a real pleasure to be involved. Well, it's a strange one. We started the London sale, Golf started the London sale in 2014. We obviously missed out last year, so this is our seventh renewal. We held it first of all in the Orangery, and then we moved across to Perks Field, both part of Kensington Palace Gardens. And as I said, we're now online, though the backdrop will hopefully give a little bit of a flavour of what it's all about and our partners and everything else. Uh, straight away, I think I should move on. We have 11 horses in. There's a variety of horses. They all come from England, Ireland or France. Just one from France, the listed winner Perseverance. But four of the entries in the sale today have already been declared to run on Wednesday. And we just quickly tackle that. They are Albion Square and Tipperary Sunset, lots two and four, who have been declared to run in the Windsor Castle, Zinc White in the Queen's Vase, and So I Told You in the uh, Kensington Palace Stakes. Some thoughts on those? Well, the Windsor Castle, Nick, we, we know what it's all about. It's all about speed and percocity, and the two horses that are being offered here today very much fit that bill. Albion Square for Jessica Harrington has improved start to start and looked very impressive at Navin last time. You know, still showing little signs of inexperience, you know, raising hopes that there would be, still be plenty of improvement to come. And Tipperary Sunset, an unbeaten profile for a man, John Quinn, that's been there and done it at the Royal Meeting. And you'd have to be excited about him too, because for all the, the speed and precocity he's shown, he's been very strong over the line in his races, Nick. The stiff finish at Ascot should suit him well. And anyone that's lucky enough to, to get hold of these horses today, I think can go into Royal Ascot on Wednesday with a real chance. Zinc White has been declared to run in the Queen's Vase. That might be significant. That's quite an aggressive declaration, Nick, because Zinc White was also entered in the King George V handicap. It must be indicative of Rafe Beckett's opinion of this horse that they've decided to run in group company rather than handicap company. A very progressive horse that stays very well. And again, look, he, he'll have a little bit to find on the figures, Nick, but he's really going the right way. And that's a real declaration an of intent An eye-catcher at Sandown, I think, wasn't he? He was an eye-catcher when he won it. Sunday. Oh yeah, and look, look, stamina seems to be his thing. That's what this race uh, tests, and absolutely, yeah. he's going there with a shot. So he's lot five, and the other runner that we have declared on Wednesday is the following lot, lot six. So I told you, he's one of four entries from uh, one of four entries, I say, from the Joseph O'Brien yard, with which you're closely associated. So the Kensington Palace Stakes, that set up for So I told you. Absolutely. We've had the race in mind for quite some time for So I Told You. She's re Joseph's really got a good tune out of her since taking her on earlier this year. She's two from two for Joseph, up to a rating of 95 now. She'll certainly end up in stakes company, I think, Nick, but if she can go and go very close in a race like this on the way, it would be fantastic. This is a new race, round mile. I think it will suit her very well. Well, I think that's the case. The great thing is, so we have a choice of four horses that are running on Wednesday. Then we have some horses holding entries on Thursday, Friday and Saturday. So there is a great opportunity for people. We don't actually have any declarations for tomorrow. So there's a bit of time to get everybody organised afterwards. Hopefully, uh, Mike Catamull can now join us. Um, Mike is over in London. And can we hear us, Mike? Nick, I can hear you loud and clear. And uh, welcome. Welcome to Daphne's restaurant here in South Kensington. You mentioned at the top of our broadcast, Nick, that of course, in normal circumstances, we'd be in Kensington Palace Gardens. We're only about a five minute walk away from there now, in the heart of South Ken and Belgravia, and uh, the guests are just starting to arrive here, a selected audience of agents, owner breeders, trainers. I can see Hugo Palmer here, he's just arrived as well all waiting to uh, see what happens at the latest edition of the Golf's London Sale. Now, we're at Daphne's Restaurant, an iconic, celebrated restaurant, and uh, we're in the conservatory at the back here and looking forward to what's going to unfold over the next uh, couple of hours or so.
But, you know, this sale is not just a sale as such. Obviously, it gives you an opportunity with the 11 lots we've got coming up, 10 of them entered at, at the Royal Meeting, a chance for you to grab a, a slice of the action this week at Royal Ascot. But it's also become a real event, hasn't it? It's uh, really firmly established now in any horseman's calendar. And uh, I want to welcome now, uh, talk to if uh, hope our communications systems will work, and chat now to uh, Henry Beebe, Goff's uh, chief executive, who will be auctioning the, the lots in just a few moments' time. Henry, a very good afternoon to you. Good afternoon, Mike. Wonderful to see you. Sorry I can't hug you and shake you by your hand, but uh, good to see you nonetheless. Henry, the, 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 the sound is not the best, but if you can hear me, I just wanted to ask you uh, about, um, you know, the, the way that you've adapted over the last couple of years here. This sale obviously is quite new to the scene, but it's established itself so quickly. And this interactive virtual event is just something a little bit different. Well, yes, Mike, we've always said this is a sale like no other. Um, it established itself very quickly as being that. Uh, something that became the focus of the bloodstock world and racing world around around the globe on the eve of Royal Ascot. Uh, of course, COVID got in the way last year completely, and we decided that we couldn't let it go for a second year, so we've come to hold this, what we hope will be a virtual sale like no other. We've held a few online sales already. We've sold since last August something in the region of 10 million euro worth of horses on our Goffs online platform since we had to introduce it uh, last year. Uh, and we want to make this a little bit different as well. So hopefully that will prove to be the case. Henry, what I wanted to ask you as well is um, how, do you, how do you go about sourcing these potential lots? Obviously, you know, we mentioned that uh, 10 of the 11 have got entries at Royal Ascot. Have you been pleased with the uptake this year? Yes, I mean, it's, it's a very proactive uh, vendor recruitment process led by Nick. Uh, backed up by our superb team in Goffs like Joey Cullen, Kevin O'Ryan, Mary Kilduff, Tom Taff, Haley O'Connor. Uh, they all work together and essentially they are all form experts themselves. So they're tracking race after race after race and looking at a horse that uh, may look interesting, uh, hopefully with, a, with, a, with a, an entry in Royal Ascot. And then they're on the phone. The, the horse has hardly pulled up. The jockey's still on the horse's back and they might be onto the connections. So it's a very sort of labour intensive process in the short window in the few weeks leading up to Royal Ascot because the horses have to be hot, they have to be in form uh, and they need to be going to the Royal Meeting to be of most interest. Absolutely right. And uh, I think we've got some really live, interesting runners uh, there this week. As Nick was just saying a few moments ago, some of them already declared to run on Wednesday. It's incredibly exciting. Still more guests arriving here. We'll keep you posted with what's going on here at the London uh, side of the Goffs London sale. But in the meantime, I'll hand back to the team at Goffs HQ. Sheen Murphy, Kamiko and Wichita, and Kamiko will just prevail in the guineas. But it's Zostar, Zostar beat Dissenham. And Zostar won by two legs. About the gold is now, however, in full cry, and he's getting on top place home. Late experiment as Sheen Murphy gets through and of one. Well, great. It was great to see Mike there. I suspect the guests arriving are making plenty of noise in the background and glad that he could hear Henry coming back to him over in Daphne's restaurant in London. He actually said uh, 10 of the 11 have uh, Royal Ascot possibilities. In fact, all 11 of them have Royal Ascot possibilities. Which one would you be picking out now, Kevin? Oh, it's tricky, Nick. There's, there's a great amount of choice and plenty of different profiles. One that we haven't spoke about so far is another one of the Joseph O'Brien foursome, visualisation. And his entry, he, has, he holds a couple of entries as it is, but the one he's likely to run in will only be made available probably as we're speaking here. He'll be entered in the Golden Gates handicap on Saturday. And I, I think he's got a right good chance, I think, Nick. He's been a lovely, progressive horse. He's been looking like he's ready for a mile and a quarter. He won a mile handicap at the Guineas weekend at the Curra. And we're hoping that the step up uh, to the additional two furlongs will bring about some more improvement and he can go and go very close there before shaping into a stakes performer. A highly rated horse as well, I think. Yeah, well, he's up into the hundreds now, Nick, and he's, he's very much earned it. He has a wonderful attitude to racing, wonderful constitution, tries very hard, and hopefully he'll do all those things on Saturday. And homegrown. 
absolutely a home bred for Aidan and Amory O'Brien, so that makes it all the sweeter. And look, he, he's a horse that you'd be delighted to be involved with. And here we are today. Someone's going to have an opportunity to get in just before the most exciting day of all, potentially. Well, what's interesting about the London sale is going back to the 2014 and, and, and the seven years or the six years we've held the sale has been the success of a lot of the graduates. You know, uh, for instance, there was a French horse in one of the early sales from the Clement stable, Paul Nichet, went on to be a Group 1 winner in Australia. Mm -hmm. There was a horse from a French stable of Pascal Barry, Smoking Sun, went to be a top-class performer in the Saudi Arabia. Harbour Law, uh, who won the English St. Ledger, was sold at a London sale as a two-year-old. Mm -hmm. We had Mohican Heights. We've had a lot of good horses shine so bright. Of course, we had the uh, great participation for a few years of the King Power operation, mm -hmm. and that was we like to feel was very much part of what really enticed them into the whole racing, the racing game. And we have sold horses to a numerous number of markets. And hopefully the online aspect of today's sale will be an inclusive one and will encourage people to engage with the sale. Now I'm conscious the sale is due to start in less than five minutes. I don't know whether we can go back to Mike there in London and perhaps... Yep, we're going to go to Henry. Sorry, we're going to go to Henry first. I beg your pardon. Over to Henry, who's uh, ready to start the sale in about five minutes. Yes, and before we do, I just want to uh, just draw the attention of all potential participants to our terms and conditions. So all potential purchasers are referred to the conditions of sale. Now, these have been adapted for this sale. Uh, they're online, so if anybody's thinking of bidding and they think they know the conditions of sale, uh, please double-check and make sure you're aware, because they will bind you to those conditions of sale. In particular, uh, I'd like to draw your attention to condition 1.1 and 1.3. 1.13, which relates to the currency of the purchase price. Uh, 2.1 talks about commission and fees, and particularly 2.13 and 2.14 that refers to purchases, and 4.1a that, it, that deals with basis of sale, because all lots are sold with a pre-sales veterinary certificate that I'll read out uh, as each lot is offered. Now, as Nick mentioned, all lots have entries in the Royal Meeting, uh, and successful purchasers should speak to Weatherby's to complete the paperwork for the transfer of ownership and to ensure your new horse colours your colours uh, at Asker when running. And we're very grateful to BHA for their help and cooperation in allowing this unique facility at this sale. The minimum bid will be £20,000 uh, and the online bidding system will offer buyers a number of bid advances from which you can make a selection. Uh, Goff's personnel are also on hand to accept telephone bids if you prefer from approved clients. Uh, and please note that the Goff's online bidding platform is not via the live stream of the sale on the Goff's website as it, and is only accessible uh, for approved uh, purchases. All accounts will be settled in the currency of the country in which the horse is based at the time of sale. We have horses, as Nick has told you, from Ireland, France and the UK. So the auction will be conducted in pounds sterling, uh, but the price will be converted that you pay uh, to the currency in which the horse was in. Uh, you're advised to listen carefully to anything I say as I introduce each lot, because any alterations to the catalogue are final and binding on anybody, anybody bidding. And following the fall of Hammer, Goffs will issue all purchases uh, with an email pass out which will be copied to the relevant vendors and will be required to collect the lot from the vendor as soon as is practical. Finally, on behalf of the team at Goffs, I want to just thank uh, all our partners for their ongoing and tremendous support. Uh, Kipco, Chateleoub, Selfridges have been with us from the start. Also, Ampito Group, one and only, the International Yacht Company, GBRI, and for the first time this year, Fitstairs. We're grateful, we're thankful, and we look forward to joining them back in the gardens in Kensington Palace next year. Thank you, Henry. Yes, indeed. So, as Henry said, hopefully people are watching this on golfs.com, being broadcast to wherever everybody is in the world. The bidders in this sale will be engaging through a different platform, through the Golfs Online, which they will have been given logins to uh, as a result of clearing the authorities required to, to bid at the sale. Uh, we're really hopeful that this sale will produce a Royal Ascot winner. We're extremely pleased that it's going to produce looks like 11 Royal Ascot runners and the first of those uh, is about to start. It's nearly one o'clock when we said we'd start the sale so we can start introducing the uh, first lot which is a horse declared to run on Wednesday in the Windsor Castle Stakes. It's lot two because lot one is actually a withdrawn lot and lot two the first sale uh, the first horse in the sale is Albion Square. Son of acclamation Kevin. <laughs> 
This is a lovely coat, Nick. We'll see him here near side, winning on what was his third start at Navin. He, he's learned with each one of his starts, but you'll still see here late on, he's getting a little bit lonely, still showing signs of inexperience. More progression to come from him, Nick, and I think he has a sneaky chance in the Windsor Castle. Yeah, and he looks an improvement on pedigree. He's by Acclamation, who's a great sire. He's a sire of horses such as Dark Angel, and there's longevity in Acclamation line horses, as far as I'm concerned. And the second down, Pures, was a winner of the Lock-In Stakes. It's a good Chievely Park piece of Chiefly Park breeding here. So there's everything to suggest that this horse is on an upward curve. I believe it has an entry in the Phoenix Stakes. And we can hear now, before we start selling the horse, we can hear from Jesse Harrington. Lot two at the London sales is Albion Square. He's a very nice acclimation colt. He's well grown with a very, very good temperament. He won very easily in Navan over five furlongs, his last start. And we were very happy with him. He has come on a lot since that last run. He has two entries in Ascot. He's entered in the Windsor Castle and the Norfolk Stakes. After that, he has an entry for the Railway Stakes and the Group 1 Phoenix Stakes. And I think he'll turn, he'll make up into being a proper Group 1 horse. All right, here we go. The first lot, and before I uh, auction Albion Square, uh, just to reiterate that all lots have pre-sales veterinary certificates. Uh, this one comes from Hugh Dillon, is dated the 10th of June, uh, and he finds no clinical findings that prejudice this horse is suited to be used for racing. So he's clean and passed for racing. So I'll be in square. The first we have there, ladies and gentlemen. You've heard all about him. He's got a Group 1 entry, clearly highly thought of. And let's start away with him. What are we going to do for a start? Put me in. Well, I can't see you, but you can see me. Bid me what about a couple of hundred thousand? He's worth it or more. 200,000 pounds. Anybody got 200, 200,000 pounds and put me in? 200 or 100. Anybody got a bit of 100,000 and put me in 100? How about 50? Bid. I've got 50,000 online now, 50,000 now. Add 50,000, any bid now, who goes on now? 50,000 bid. Add 50,000, the opening bid now, 50 online, straight away now, 50 bid. Add 50,000, I got 55, 55 now. Add 55,000, any bid now, 55, 5, any bid now, 55, I got 60 bid, I got 70 now. Add 70,000, you're all in now, 70 bid now, 70 go. Add 70,000 pounds, any bid now, 70 bid now, 70 go. Add 70,000 pounds, I'll be in square now at 70. Add 70,000 pounds with a group one entry, clearly highly thought of. Add 70,000 pounds, any bid now, 70 go. 80 bit, I get 80 now. At 80,000, then it be now 80,000, I get 90 bit, I get 100. At 90,000, then it be now 90,000, 90,000 go. At 90,000, then it be now 90,000, I get 100. At 90,000, then 100,000 bid, 100,000 now. At 100,000, said it be now 100,000, get 100,000 bid. At 100,005 more, if you like, 105, I got. At 105, it'd be now 105 and 10 bid, 110 now. At 110,000, then it be now 110 and bid, 110 I got. At 110,000, then it be now 110, I got 115, 115 now. At 115, how about 20? At 115, I'll be in square, the good two-year-old now. At 115, 120 bid. At 120,000, then it'd be now 120 now. At 120 and five, again, it'd be like 125 now. At 125, it'd be now 125. At 125, a Windsor Castle entry with a Group 1 entry following that. At 125 and bid. At 125 and bid, 130 now. At 130,000, then it'd be now 130, 130 bid. At 130, come on. At 130, we're going this time, then at 130 now. At 100. 135, 135 and bid. At 135, it'd be 135, 140, 140 now. At 140,000, then it'd be 140 and 50 bid, 150 bid. At 150,000 and five, ten if you like. At 150,000, then it'd be 155, I got. At 155, it'd be 155 now. At 155, it'd be 155 bid, 155 now. At 155, 60, 160 now. At 160, 165, quick in your bid now. At 165, at 165 and bid. The group one entry with the Windsor Castle run at 165 and bid at 165 but going for the hammer this time then quickly at 165 he's had his time he heads for Ascot and then on to group one Gloria hopefully at 165 the same stable that won the Phoenix last year at 165 but goes this time make no mistake at 165,000 then last call here we go at 165 all done if it is in this time all done at 165 and goes this time around then at 165 last call at £165,000 and... It's not sold, afraid not. We need a little bit more than that. Lot three. Lot three will be next in. Here's Military Mission. Yes, Military Mission is a, a, a grey gelding by Master Craftsman. Perhaps a little bit unlucky last time at Chester. It was impressive, though, on the run before at Salisbury, Kevin. And he holds an entry in the King George V, I think, on Thursday. 
I think he might just sneak into the bottom of the King George V handicap, Nick. He was very impressive this day at Salisbury. This horse was a slow burner as a two-year-old, held back by his inexperience, but he's really rolling now. And like you say, I thought that was a very unlucky run at Chester last time. He just got too far back, flew home, stepping up to a mile and a half in the King George. Might well suit him. He's very interesting. Yeah, and he's a progressive horse rating. He's from that wonderful family of Meon Valley, one so wonderful. It's a, for pedigree buffs, this is a family that kind of holds its form and should be up to a good long racing career. I think we can hear from his trainer, Hugo Palmer now. Hopefully we can go over to a bit of footage with Hugo. Military mission, yeah, he's, he's a lovely horse. He's a horse I liked from, from the moment I first saw him, actually, at the, the Goffs Orby sale a couple of years ago. Um, and he developed really well from a yearling into a two-year-old, and then he let me down a couple of times last year. Um, we expected much more of him as a two-year-old, but he's really improved this year for being gelded, which, which has been fantastic. And, and you know, he's running over a mile last year. He's on a mile and a quarter with him, with him this year, which is where he's been winning. Um, but I'm really looking forward to seeing him stepping up in trip. I think he's a, a really nice staying horse in the making. Um, he will have uh, he'll be entered at, at Ascot in, in both the staying three-year-old handicaps, the, the Golden Gate, but I think more likely the George V would, would be the right sort of target for him. He reminds me very much of a horse that we used to have here by, by the same sire called Paths of Glory, um, who was a, a progressive staying handicapper by Master Craftsman when we had him here. And he's gone down to Australia where he's, where he's won stakes races and continued to perform really well down there. So I've always seen this horse very much in, in the same mold as, as him. Um, and he's, a, you know, he's, a, he's a, an average sized, easy moving, um, light on his feet sort, sort of horse. And um, I see him doing very well both both here in, in, in Europe, um, but also on, on the world stage. Yeah, big recommendations from Hugo. And here's military mission, Mathilde Texier, the renowned veterinary surgeon recommends him for purchase following examination. A military mission then, you've heard all about him. All right, what do we do here? Come on, I give me all about 300,000 pounds and put me in, 300. Anybody get a bit of three, two, one, quick. Anybody get a bit of 100,000 and put me in 100,000 anywhere? Anybody get a bit of 100,000 online if you got it? Anybody get a bit of 100, how about 50? Anybody get up at 50 bid? 50,000 now, at 50,000, anybody now, who goes on 60,000 bid? 70 go, at 70,000, two bidders now, at 70, get 80, bidder get 80 now. At 80,000, anybody now, at 80,000, I got 90, bidder get 100. At 90,000, anybody now, 90,000 now. At 90,000, anybody now, 90,000, get 100, better get 100 now. At 100,000, I got 10, better get 110. I got 20, better get 120 now. At 120,000, then it'd be now 120 bid. At 120 for military mission now, at 120 go. At 120,000, then it'd be now who goes on now, at 120, got 30. At 130,000, then it'd be now 130, got 5. 135 now. At 135 is online now, at 135 now. At 135 and all online, 135 now. At 135, it'd be now at 135 bid. 135, yes. At 135, the other man is gone now, at 135 now. At 100. 35, it'll be now at 135, go. At 140, 140 bid, 140 now. At 140 is online, now at 140, go. At 140,000, then it'll be now at 5, bid 145, another one. At 145 and against you, at 145, it'll be now at 145 now. At 145, instead of being at 160, 160 bid. 160, I've got straight away, well bid. At 160, yes, five more. At 100, 165. At 165, military mission. At 165, it'll be now at 165 now. At 165, and one more at 170,000, they'd be now on 75 online. At 170,000, they'd be now on 70. 170, 170, I've got online. At 170, looking for five. At 170,000, bid. At 170,000, they'd be now on 70. Anybody else? At 170, my other man is gone now. At 170, bid. At 170,000, they'd be now on 70 now. At 170, they'd be now 170 now. At 170, but going with the hammer and going now. At 170,000, get ready. At 170,000, the original bidder is out. My new man is in. At 170, then hammers up this time, fair warning, at 170,000. Get ready at 170,000 and goes this time, all done at 170,000 pounds and sold to Johnny McKeever. Thank you, Johnny, and good luck. 170,000 buys. Yeah, well done, Johnny. That might well be for one of his Australian clients. Johnny spent a lot of the last year down in Australia. It's good to have him back up in this part of the world and good to see him active. Lot four is next in, Tipperary Sunset. This is an impressive two-year-old Kevin, son of our dad coming up from John Quinn's Bellwood Cottage Stables and another one in the Windsor Castle. Won the race well in Beverly the other day. 
He did, and prior to that, Nick, he, he'd been quite impressive on his debut after having to overcome some adversity that he met at the start of the race. He looked sharp that day, but he looked even sharper this day at Beverly. Showed plenty of early pace, but you'll see here when he was challenged, he really sticks his head down. And what I like, Nick, is he was good and strong over the line. I think the stiff finish at Ascot will suit him very well. He's declared for the Windsor Castle. He's in and he has a chance. Yes, and of course, I think you mentioned earlier on the John Quinyard a few years ago sold wow, the wow signal quite close to mm -hmm. the Royal Meeting, who went on to win the Coventry Stakes. And uh, let's hope they're going to do the same thing. Let's hope they're going to sell this well-touted two-year-old, and let's hope he's going to be victory, uh, victorious for his new owners in the Windsor Castle. So let's see if we can hear from Sean Quinn, assistant to his father, John. He's a horse who's been professional from day one. I'm looking forward to, uh, to sending him to Ascot after heading to the London sale. The, uh, the, the, the race that he won up at Hamilton uh, has been won by a Norfolk winner in the past in the shape of Bapak Chinta. And the race that he won at Beverly has also been won by a Norfolk winner in the past in the shape of Prince of Lear. So he's got Royal Ascot credentials uh, surrounding him and uh, we feel he's going to be a live runner down at the Royal Meeting this year. Temporary sunset. And interestingly, those two horses that Sean mentioned are both graduates of a golf sales ring. So that all goes well for the hopes of Tipperary Sunset. Baker, McVeigh and Abbott are well known to everybody. Paul Lentilic uh, says, in my opinion, this horse is in good condition to continue his racing career. There you have it from the vendors of the Wow Signal, the Quins, they don't get, get much wrong. And here's a fellow with a bold chance. Come on, what, I reckon he's worth a quarter of a million all day long. 250 and put me in. 250, what about two or 100 and put me in 100 anywhere? Anybody get a bit of 100,000 and put me in? Come on, all you are listening to me. 150 then. Yes, I've got it straight away. At 50,000 straight away now, 50,000 online. At 50,000, there'd be known who goes on now, 50,000 bid. I got 60 bid, 70,000 now. At 70,000, there's two of you bidding straight away now at 70, 80 bid, 80,000 now. At 80,000, how about it? At 80,000, how about 100? At 80 or 90, 100 bid, 100 online. At 100,000, said it'd be now at 100,000 now. At 100,000, the Windsor Castle entry now at 100 bid. At 100,000 from the stable of the Wow Signal now at 100 go. At 100,010 bid, 110 now. At 110 is all online now at 110 a go. At 110, anybody on the phone now at 110 and bid. At 110, I got 20 bid, I got 120 now. At 120,000, that'd be now 120 bid, 120 go. At 120, that'd be now 121.5 if you like. At 125, thank you. At 125, now 30. At 130, you got five more. At 130,000, that'd be now 130 bid, five more if you like. At 135 bid, 135 now. At 135, it'd be now the temporary sunset. At 135 and 40 bid, 140 go. At 140,000, that'd be now 140 online. At 140,000, that'd be now 140, it's all online. At 150, 150 now. At 150,000, that'd be 55. 155 now. At 155 online. At 155 and bid. 155 now. At 155 against you all. At 160 bid. 160 now. At 160 and five again. 165 now. At 165 and bid. At 165 and Tipperary Sunset. 165 ago. At 170 bid. 170 now. At 175 bid. 175 now. At 175 all against you online. At 175 and bid. At 175, it would have been 180, 180 now. And five again, 185 now. At 185, now two. At 185, how about the two? At 185, I reckon they might do it. At 185, how about 90 then? 190 bid, thank you. At 190, now two. At 190, go two. At 190, then they would 190, go. At 105, if you like, it's all there for you. At 190, but heading to the Windsor Castle. At 190, with a bold chance now. At 195, a bid, you got two. At 195, you got two. At 195, against my original man now at 195 now at 195 and even 195 ago at 195 try the two at 195 it's a night 200,000 bid at 200,000 a nice round figure at 200,000 against my other bid and now at 200 online at 200,000 that'd be now 200 the Windsor Castle entry at 200,000 then it'd be now 200 but going now at 200,000 the son of the bold our dad now 200,000 go at 200,000 what a start this stallion's made at 200,000 heading to Asker with with Tiberi sunset at 200,000 but going for the hammer this time then at 200,000 fair warning we're going at 200,000 get ready and at 200,000 we're going for it this time all done last time at 200,000 and goes this time around then at 200,000 pounds and sold Alan Jatier uh, good luck thank you very much indeed 200,000 buys well congratulations to that gentleman and the best of luck in the Windsor Castle Lot five is next, Kevin. We have Zinc White. Here's an interesting horse, a good staying prospect. He's by Vadimos, and uh, he was a very eye-catching winner at Sandown last time. He's uh, heading to the Queen's Vars. 
He is, Nick, and that's a very interesting declaration by Rafe Beckett because this fella was also entered in the King George V handicap. So to declare for the Queen's Vaz, I think, is quite an aggressive move, indicative of the regard he's held in. He's been very good in winning his two starts in mile and three quarter handicaps this season. And he's out of Chinese white, Nick, who won a Group 1 as a five-year-old herself. So he's certainly bred to improve with time and continue, and continue progressing. Yeah, I mean, he's a horse you just can see you know, there are so many people who want to own a horse like this, who, you know, Vadimos has now become a horse recognized as being very much a dual purpose stallion. And I think there's every reason to like this. So let's see if we can hear from Rafe Beckett, who's his trainer, group one trainer. He's going to develop uh, think through the now. year. And I can see him progressing at four. That wouldn't be a surprise, given his pedigree, Chinese white being by Dalakani. You'd expect all of that. Horse with a very good attitude both to work and to his racing. I think uh, he's a terrific temperament for the job. Um, as regards uh, Royal Ascot, he'll have entries for the Queen's Vars and the George V. And uh, we'll hope for a drop of rain, but uh, we plan to run. Well, that's good news, Rafe. Uh, we hope you win as well. Uh, here's Zinc White. Jamie O'Gorman uh, gives a pass certificate. And Zinc White, as you hear, uh, highly thought of by Rafe. And uh, what are we going to do here? I reckon this fellow's also worth around the £250,000 mark. Put me in. Anybody got 250 you should make it a more. 250 or 200 or 100 What do you want to do? Anybody go, who's out there? Anybody got 100000 and put me in? 100 bid. I got 100000 straight away online now at 100000 now. At 100000 any bid now who goes on now at 100000 go. At 100000 the opening bid now at 100 is worth double trouble this all day long. At 100000 any bid now at 100000 and heading for the Queen's Vars with Rafe. At 100000 any bid now 5 bid. 105 now. At 105 I got 10, I got 110 now. At 110, I got 20, but I got 120 now. At 120, any bit now, who goes on now? At 120, go. At 120, any bit at 125 now. At 125, it's all online now. At 125, I go. At 125, and any bit now, 125 and bid. At 125, is Zinc White, the well bred individual. At 125, he's bred to do it. At 125, any bit now, 125. 30 bit, 130 now. At 130, for the Queen's Vows entry now, at 135. At 135, all along now, at 135 and bid. At 135, any bit now, who goes on? Now 135 ago. At 135, 140. 140 now. At 140 and 5. 145 ago. At 145, 145 now. At 145 and 50. At 145, 50 bit. 150 now. At 150 down. That'd have been 155 ago. At 155, I mean 160. 165 now. At 170, gonna 170 say. At 170, that'd have been 170, 175 now. At 175, and that'd have been 175 ago. At 175, it'd have been 175 now. At 175, the others you out. At 180 back in now. At 180 now, at 180 now, 180 bid. At 180 then, at 185. At 185, at even at 185, 200,000 go. At 200,000 jumps. At 200,000 online now, 200 is all against the rest of you. At 200,000 to a new bidder from far away. At 200,000, the quick 210, 210 and bid. At 210, closer to home now, 210 go. At 220 bid again now, 220 new bidder. At 220, you all want him, I can see why. At 220, the Queen's Vars entry now, 220 go. At 220, is that even now, 220 now, 220 bid. At 220 bid. Again now at 220, a new bidder at 220, 230, 230 and bid at 230. That'd be now at 230 now at 230. He's got a big chance, this fella at 230. But again now at 230, I still reckon his value at 230. But again now at 230 bid, 240 go at 240, you get 50 at 240. But again now at 240, 250 bid, 250 far away at 250. But again now at 250 now at 250,000 go at 250. That'd be now at 250, 250 now at 250. The rest of you are out at 250, 260 back in 260 now at 260. But again now at 260 at 260 come on my friend at 260 at 260 I know you can hear me but again 270 thank you at 270 but again now at 270 at 270 the bolt bids 300 lads all right 275 280 280 bid now three at 280 bid again now 280 at 280 bid again now 280 the bolt bid is still 300 at 280 bid again now 290 290 290 now do it for me at 290 at 290 at 290 thank you
300,000 bid. At 300, if you don't see, see it here first, try again. At 310, if you like. At 300,000, 310, thank you. At 310, that'd be now 310 on bid. At 310,000, that'd be now 310 now. At 310, the rest of you are out. At 310, that'd be now 310 ago. At 310, the Queen's of Andrea, 310. At 310, every chance now, 310 now. At 310 and quick. At 310, the rest of you out now, 310. At 310, but I'm going for the hammer this time then. At 310, it'd be now 310 now. At 310, that'd be now 310 ago. At 310, get ready this time then. At 310, the hammer's coming up. At 310, then last call, here we go. If I was in the ring, I'd be swinging it. At 310, get ready. At a 310, we're going for it this time, fair warning. At 310,000, but sold this time. At 310,000, the Queen's Vars entry goes this time. Hammers up at 310,000 pounds and sold. Oliver Greenall, the best of luck, Oliver, and thank you. 310,000 buys. Yes, well done indeed to the Greenalls. And uh, lot six is next. Here we got So I Told You. So I Told You is the only uh, female in the catalogue, the only filly declared to run on Wednesday in the Kensington Palace Stakes. Uh, Kevin, you know a little bit about So I Told You, so get telling. Yeah, she's a lovely filly, Nick. She was trained by Richard Hughes last year. She ran in the Ribblesdale at this meeting last year. She wasn't quite ready to fulfil her potential then, but she's making up for lost time now. She's won her last two in great style, winning at Sligo there, as we just saw. I think there's more improvement in this filly, Nick. I think coming back in trip in the Kensington Palace will be no problem. She'll handle faster ground. She handled Sligo very well. You could see her zipping around bends in America, potentially, in her, in her future. But she's a lovely filly and will continue, to con will continue to progress, I feel. She's on a rising rating. She's a filly who could get black type. Let's hear a little bit, I think, um, we're going to hear from Joseph, who I think has given us a few words. So, I want you to be looking really, we could it at the sales last year as one could progress as she got older. Uh, her two runs this year have been two passive wins, shaping like a filly with no trouble stepping into this company. Uh, she had been working very well, and uh, it was nice to bring her good homework to the track. Uh, she has been running Philly's handicap by Lascott, as a race, I expect her to be very competitive. And uh, we think that it's still well kept and hopefully it's more progress. Uh, her ideal list is probably 10 pounds, and she seems to be very well when it comes to ground, having one on quick and long and slower very previously. And she's a fit who we think will be well capable of getting back. Yeah, I'm sorry, that was a little bit of a a little bit of an interference there on Joseph's veins, but luckily we have Kevin here who's probably told us quite a lot of the same things. It's a promising horse, so yes, she's number six, so I told you. Over to you, Henry. Thank you very much indeed, Nick. Uh, so I told you we have a veterinary certificate from the renowned O'Byrne and Halley veterinary surgeon practice uh, signed by John Hanley. He notes, first of all, this horse is 16 one hands or 164 centimetres and states, in my opinion, this filly should make an excellent candidate for racing. Uh, there you have that opinion. And please note as well, something not in your catalogue, uh, this filly has been seen to Winsuck. Uh, but she's declared in the Kensington Palace Stakes. You've heard Kevin uh, give her a, a mighty introduction. Everybody should want this filly after that. She's well-bred from the great Nyarkos family, and I reckon she's worth at least 300,000 to put me in. Anybody get a bit of 300,000 to put me in? 300 for I, for I saw, I told you. 300, 200, 100, what do you want to do? 50. Anybody? 50 on beer. I got 50,000. Said it'd be now 50,000 now. At 50,000 for the well bred Philly by Glen Eagles now. 50,000 go. At 50,000, let it be now 60,000. 70,000 go. At 70,000, let it be now 70. Get 80, better get 80 now. At 80, 100, 100 now. At 100,000, said it'd be now 100 go. I got 100,000, said it'd be now 100,000 now. At 100,000, the well bred Philly at 100 go. At 100,000, let it be now 100,000 now. At 100,010, bit 110 go. At 110,000, let it be now 110 and beer. At 110, let it be now 110. At 20 bit 120 now at 120 or five if you like 120 now at 120 got 30 but I got 130 now at 130,000 they've been out on 30 bit 130 go at 130,000 so I told you at 130,000 look at the pedigree as well think about think about the next day at 130,000 they've been out on 30 go at 135 135 now at 135 140 140 bit at 140,000 they've been out on 40 now 140 go at 140 they've been at 140 now at 140 and five 140 145 go at 145, 150.
At 150 now. At 150. The original man is out. At 150. At 150. Anybody on the phones now at 150 beard? At 150. They'll have been at 150 now. The well-bred filly. At 150. In the Arcos family at 150. At 150. They'll have been at 150 now. She's got great potential, this filly. At 150. But again, now five if you like. 155. At 150. For 160. At 160 beard. At 160 down. They'll have been at 160 beard. At 160. 170. At 170 now. At 170. They'll have been at 170 now. At 170. They'll have been at 170. At 170, you mean 170, but goes this time, make no mistake. At 170, you mean 170, go. At 170, you mean 170 now. At 170, then get ready, the well bred filly. At 170,000, going for the hammer and going now. At 170,000, then last call, here we go. At 170,000, fair warning. At 170,000, and goes this time, this time, at 170,000 pounds, and afraid not, she's not sold. 170,000, sorry. Next up, we have lot number seven. Lot number seven is the only French offering in the sale this year. And the French horses have done very well in this sale. I mentioned Porniche, a Group 1 winner, Smoking Sun, a high-class performer in Saudi Arabia, and Real Deal, who was sold from Conmar Nan's French yard and won a stakes race in Ireland as recently as last week. This is not only a son of Zoffany, he's a listed winner in Toulouse on his last start, and he goes for the Jersey Stakes. I catch this one, Kevin. Absolutely, Nick. You'll see him making the running here. He had to be tough to win this day. He's shown himself to be very versatile so far. He's performed well on good ground, heavy ground, poly track. He looks to be improving with each start. And it's from a wonderful family, Nick, from the family of Penn Celeb that we all know so well. And he'd be an interesting contender in the Jersey Stakes on Saturday. Yes, and he's, uh, as you say, he's entered in the Jersey Stakes. He also holds an entry in France at the weekend in the Paul de Moussac. Um, so there's an opportunity for him perhaps to, to go down that way. He's in training with Christophe Ferlon down in La Teste de Bouc, and uh, we haven't actually got any VT from Christophe, but we do have a piece of work. We see the horse doing his last piece of work here um, before the sale, and uh, I thought an eye-catching piece here. You'll see him on the near side, uh, the, dark, the bay horse, obviously. Um, looks very impressive there. He's coming past you. He was going a bit faster than that in the real thing. That's, I think, uh, slowed up. But anyway, he looks extremely well. And I was talking to Connections this morning. They're pretty fired up about the jersey. So let's hope that he, um, he proves their predictions right. With that, over to Henry to sell Perseverance on lot seven, the son of Zoffany. Thank you, Nick. And a great bit of potential here. We have to hand a veterinary certificate from Dr. Hélène Pouly, who states this colt is in full exercise. He was sound and moved well during the examination. In my opinion, he's in good condition to continue his racing career. Lots to like about this one from the top French trainer. All right, what are we going to do here? This fella, this fella should attract plenty of attention, and I reckon he ought to make it. The guts of a half a million, 500,000 above here. Anybody get a bit of a 500,000? Anybody where? 500, 4, 3, 2. What are we going to do? 200. How about 100? I know you can hear me. 100? 100 and bid. 100,000, thank you. At 100,000, then he'd be known who goes on now to 100,000 now. At 100,000, then he'd be known who goes on now to 100,000 bid, 100,000 go. At 100,000, the French horse now to 100 and 100 now. At 110 and bid now to 110 a go. At 110, then he'd be 110, 120 bid. At 120, but again now 120 go. At 120, then he'd be now 120 now. At 120, then he'd be now 120, 140. 140 go. At 140, then he'd be now 140 now. At 140, then he'd be now 140 go. At 140, 160. 160 now. At 160, but again now 180. 180 got two at 180, but again now 180 now at 180,000. That got two, but I got two now. I got 200,000. That'd be now 200 go at 200 against the first man now 200 go at 200,000. That'd be now 210, 210 and beer at 210, but again now 220, 220 go at 220, but again now 220 now at 220 with the big entries now 220, 240, 240 beer at 240, but again now 240, 50 bit 250 now at 250, but again now 250 go 250, 260, 260 now at 260, but again now 270, 270 beer at two. 300,000 now. Big bid. Well, thank you. At uh, 300,000, that'd be now 300 now. At uh, 300,000, that'd be now 300 go. At uh, 300, the other two bidders are out. At uh, 300,000, that'd be now 300 now. At uh, 300,000, that'd be now 10 if you like. At uh, 310 bid. 310 and bid. At uh, 320 is back. At uh, 310, my original man. At uh, 310, 320, 320 bid. At uh, 320 bid again now, 320 bid. At uh, 320 bid again now, 320 go. 320 now. At uh, 320 bid again now, 320 you're out. At uh, 320 bid again now, the rest of you out now, 320 go. At uh, 320 bid again now, Persever. Now 320 bid. Uh, 320 bid again. Now 320. 30. Uh, 320. 
3.20 bit. At 3.20 now. At 3.20 bit goes this time. At 3.20 bit again now. 3.20. 3.30. 3.30 bit. At 3.30. 3.30 bit again now. 3.30. At 3.30 go. At 3.30 bit again now. 3.30. At 3.30 bit again now. 3.30. 3.30 go. At 3.30 any bit now. 3.30 now. At 3.30 bit it goes this time. At 3.30 bit again now. 3.40. 3.40 on bit. At 3.40 bit again now. 3.40. 3.40 go. At 3.40 bit again now. 3.40. At 3.40 bit goes this time. Make no mistake. At 340 then fair warning. At 340, thought he'd make a lot more, but he goes this time. At 340, get ready. At a 340, we're going this time, hammers up. At 340, this time. At 340, and goes this time around then. At 340,000 pounds, and afraid not, not sold. Lot 8 is next, and Lot 8 is a three year old colt who looks a very fast horse. He's called Significantly, he's well named, and he holds an interesting uh, entry in the Palace of Holyrood House Stakes on Friday when he's among the favourites for that one. This looks a fast horse, doesn't it, Kevin? Absolutely, Nick, and he's been a model of consistency through his career so far. He's only been out of the frame twice in his 11 starts. He went close to winning a listed race at Sandown last year, and to me, Nick, he looks better than ever in his last couple of starts. He was second to the exciting Dragon Symbol in a conditions race at Hamilton, and that makes him look quite well handicapped off 92, Nick, and it's not a big surprise that he is amongst the favourites for, for that race coming this Friday, and the conditions will suit him well. He must have a big chance. Yeah, I think, you know, as I said, he's, he's, he's a third favourite in a, in a Royal Ascot race, mm. only four days away. It's a rare opportunity to get one. He, he, he just looks a really consistent horse. He's always thereabouts. I think we can hear a little bit about him now, if we hopefully can. A beautiful Garswood um, gelding out of a very fast mare called Bro Rosebride. She uh, was group placed. He's um, always shown a lot of talent. He's a very fast horse. Um, great confirmation, has, uh, is a very sound horse, we've had no, no um, problems whatsoever training with him all the way through his two year old career and into this, um, into this year. He goes to Royal Ascot with a great chance in the five furlong three year old um, only handicap. Uh, his last performance was, was pretty good, he um, bumped into a horse of Archie Watson's that is now one of the favourites for the Commonwealth. Uh, because of the conditions of the race, he does, his handicap mark didn't go up. He still uh, goes to a Royal Ascot off 92, which gives him a great chance in that race. Um, he should really be a 100 plus horse, and he uh, certainly has his performances all the way through this year stand up. Uh, anybody looking at his form, that, that stands up really well. Um, confirmation wise, he's, as I say, he's been 100% sound, um, good bone, good looking horse. Um, very, very powerful animal. And what's significant about significantly is we always listen to Carl Burke, a very shrewd handler. He sends him to Ascot with a big chance in the Palace of Holyrood House Stakes over five on Friday. He's one of the market leaders, I understand. Peter Hines gave him a pass certificate at veterinary surgeon time. And uh, here's the three-year-old. He's got a big chance, this fella. And I reckon a starting bid would be, wouldn't be out of, out of order to ask for 500,000 and put me in. 500, anybody get a bit of 500,000 and put me in? Five, four, three, anybody get a bit of three? How about two or one bid? 100,000 online now at 100 bid. I get 100,000, then he'd be now at 100,000 now. At 100,000, then he'd be now at the Carl Burke entry now at 100 go. At 120, 120 now. At 120,000, then at 40 bid, 140 go. At 140,000, then he'd be now at 140 now. At 140, then he'd be now 140 go. At 140, 160, 160. Online. At 160, it's all online now. At 160, 160 bit. At 160 bit again now. At 160, 170, 170 now. At 170, they're trying to slow me up. At 180, now two. At 180, go on. Good two, two. 190, 190 bit. At 190, got two. At 190, got two. But I got 200,000 now. At 200,000, that'd be now 200 go. At 200,000, that'd be now 200 now. At 200 significantly. At 200, no one near the value at this type. At 200,000, that'd be now 200 now. At 200, worth a lot more now. 220. 220 bid at 220. That'd be now 220. Got 40 bid. Got 240 now at 240 bid again. Now 240 at 240 bid again. Now 240. 260. 260 bid at 260 bid again. Now 260. 280. 280 now three at 280 bid again. Now 280. 290. 290 bid at 290. How about three lads at 290? At 290. You know who you are at 290 bid again. Now 290 bid at 290. That'd be now 290. Go at 290. Got three at 290 bid. 300,000. Thank you at 300,000. That'd be now 300 now at 300. Where's the other bid now? 300 at uh, 300 any 
maybe now 300 now, uh, 310, 310 and beer, uh, 310, but again now 320, uh, 320, but again now 320, 320, 330. 3.30 beer, uh, 3.30 significantly, uh, 3.30 bit again now, 3.30 go, uh, 3.30 bit again now, come on, uh, 3.30 bit again now, 3.30, uh, three, I know you can hear me, uh, 3.30, uh, three, dread to think what you're saying, uh, 3.30 bit again, 3.40, 3.40 beer, uh, 3.40 bit again now, 3.40, well done, uh, 3.40 bit again now, 3.40, uh, 3.40, 3.50, 3.50 bit, 3.50 any bit now, 3.50, uh, 3.50 a go, uh, 3.50 bit again now, 3.50, 3.50, 3.60, 360 now. What do you want to do now? Uh, 360. Uh, 360. In your hands. Uh, 360. Uh, 360. Uh, 360. I know you can hear me. Uh, 360. F what? Five. 365. 365 and beer. Uh, 365. Toying with me, aren't you? Uh, 365. Uh, 365. 370. 370 beer. Uh, 370 did it be now. 370 now. Uh, 370 did it be now. 370 go. Uh, 370 did it be now. 370 now. Uh, 370, 380. 380 now. Uh, 380. The bold bids for uh, 380 and beer. Uh, 380 and significantly. Uh, 380. Remember what Carl Burke said. Goes with a big chance. Uh, 380. Uh, 380 beer. Uh, 380. But going with the hammer and going now. Uh, 380,000. Then get ready this time. Uh, 380. You're out. Make no mistake. Uh, 380 bids with me. Uh, 380,000. But you lose this time. Uh, 380, 380,000. Then last call. Here we go. At 380,000. Get ready. And at 380,000, all done. But he's done this time at 380, all done. Afraid not. Need a bit more. Not sold. Lot nine is next. And we're, we're moving on fast. We've only got four to go. And lot nine is visualization. Visualization, uh, son of the great No Nay Never, and from the family of Rock of Gibraltar. This is a horse with a three figure rating. Uh, Looks one to be going, I think, running on Thursday. Kevin, you're very associated with the uh, Joseph O'Brien yard, so you know a lot about this horse. Talk us through it a little bit. Yeah, I'm quite sweet on this horse, Nick. He's a typical one of Joseph's. He's progressed with racing, has really taken off in the handicaps this season, and you have to love his attitude. This is him winning a Premier Handicap at the Irish Guineas meeting. You know, was challenged very strongly late on and showed a great attitude to pressure, I feel. Joseph has felt all along that a step up to a mile and a quarter is what he wants. He's been patient and he's going to step up to that trip on Saturday in the Golden Gates handicap and there could well be more improvement forthcoming and he's already come a long way. And he, he, he's from the family of Rock of Gibraltar mm. and he's, he, there's a sort of family association there for Joseph. I mean, this is a horse that's always been in the O'Brien, under the O'Brien umbrella. Absolutely, the O'Briens and Joe Crowley have been developing this family for generations now and, and this colt probably takes after the female side of his family more so than no nay never. You know, he, he will stay further, he has a fantastic attitude and coming from that rugged Gibraltar family, you know, he will continue to progress all being well. Yeah, well there's an awful lot to like about this horse. We're not going to hear from Joseph again because we've heard a bit. He's entered in the Golden Gates handicap as you said, he's from a Crowley O'Brien family uh, that's been developed going back to Rock of Gibraltar. And as I've known, Nene Nebo is a, a world-class sire. This is a highly rated horse. I think he's the highest rated horse in the cell. He goes for the, uh, the race on Saturday and we'll have to see what happens. And Henry, let's see if we can get somebody new to own him. Yeah, looking forward to Saturday and seeing him run. Progressive with a great attitude, said Kevin. Listen to that. Think about that when you're bidding. I have to hand uh, John Hanley's veterinary certificate. John Hanley with the renowned O'Byrne and Halley uh, veterinary surgeons in County Tipperary. He concludes the X-ray lesions present in both front fetlocks appear to have healed. Clinically, both front fetlocks look and palpate normal and have no pain on flexion. However, these findings present a low to medium risk of affecting future soundness for racing. There you have it, visualization. You can visualize being in that great, renowned, world famous winner's enclosure after the Golden Gate with Joseph O'Brien on Saturday. This is the one to get you there. He's the highest rated horse in the catalog. He's rated 100. Everything's right. Kevin loves him. Joseph thinks highly of him. And I reckon he ought to give me a half a million to get there. Two, 500, 500,000 and put me in. Five, five, four, three, two. What do you want to do? Two, where are you? 100,000 and put me in. Anybody got a bit of 100,000 out there? 100 bid. I got 100,000 out there and 100 now. At 100,000 is online now. At 100,000 bid, I said, it'd be now 100,000 go. At 100,000, then it'd be now who goes on now. At 100, my opening bid. At 100,000, he's ready at 100. At 100,000, then it'd be 110. 110 now. At 110, I got 110. I got 20, but I got 120 online. At 120 against 130. 130 bid. At 130, then it'd be now 130. At 40. 140 now. At 140,000, then it'd be now 140 bid. 140 go. At 140,000, then it'd be now 140 now. 
now at 140. Better be now 140, 150, 150 now at 150. Better be again now 150, 160, 160 now at 160. Maybe now 160, 170, 170 beer at 170. Maybe now 170 at 170. Visualization now 170 beer at 170. The highest rated horse in the catalog at 170. It got 80, 180 now at 180. Try two at 180,000. Maybe now 200,000. Go at 200,000. Thank you at 200,000. Maybe now 200 now at 200,000 is all online now. 200 now at 200,000. Let it be now. Who goes on now? 200 ago at 200,000. Let it be now 210. 210 on beer at 210. Let it be now 210 ago at 210. I got 20 bit. I got 220 now at 220. But again, now 220. 220 bit at 220. Don't stop at 220. What do you want to do? 220. 220. Five. 225 at 225. At 225, you're slowing me up. At 225, at 225, he's got every chance. At 225, it'll be now 225. At 220, progressive individual, said Kevin, with a great attitude. At 225, at 225, do you need your colors? At 225, 230, at 230, think of Saturday. At 235, at 235, at 235, and against you. At 235, it'll be now 235, and beer. At 235, it'll be now 235, at 235, but goes this time, make no mistake. At 235, and you lose out there at 235 and even now 235 at 235 then get ready at 235 and even now 240 240 and bid and five at 245 at 245 and bid at 245 at 245 at 245 and goes this time then at 245 at 245 but the hammer's up at 245 get ready at 245 you lose this time at 245 Saturday's not for you at 245 but you lose this time make no mistake at 245 all done at 245,000, last call. Not sold, I'm afraid, 245. Well, we've just three to go, and Hong Kong Harry's the next one. He's lot 10. Hong Kong Harry is a winner of both his starts this year, over seven furlongs. He looks like a horse who wants to win, Kevin. Yeah, this is a fascinating horse, Nick. He, he took his time getting to the track, but since he has, he's been doing almost nothing but winning. He's four from five in his career. The only time he was beaten was on an unsuitable surface at Suddle. And his most recent one was his most impressive one at air. Swept through from quite a way back, showed a great turn of foot. He, he's been doing his winning over seven furlongs, Nick, but he looks to have plenty of pace to drop back to six if they so wished. He holds an entry in the Buckingham Palace Stakes on Thursday. And look, this is an exciting progressive horse that there should be more to come from. Yeah, I think he'd fit a lot of bills, this one. I know that uh, Richard Fahey, his trainer, uh, holds him in high regard. As I've said, he's, he, these lightly raced horses who are doing their best work most recently should have some appeal. And I think we can hear from Richard Fahey himself. He's a four-year-old, quite a late developing horse. Um, he, was, he was quite weak and backward as a two-year-old, but uh, as he's got older, he's got a lot more mature, a lot stronger. He's still a little bit backward and still got a bit of maturing to do, but uh, he's a horse that knows how to win. Uh, he's won four out of five and progressing rapidly. Um, he's got an entry in the Buckingham Palace. Uh, the, the race I've been sort of targeting from the beginning of the season, so uh, hopefully we get in and get a decent draw. And uh, I'm sure he'll be very competitive. Uh, as I say, he is progressing. Every week his work is getting better. And uh, in time, I think uh, I think he'll more than likely end up a pattern horse. So, uh, of, uh, of a lower rating at the moment, I, I'm sure he'll be competitive at Ascot. Competitive, says Richard. He knows how to win, says Richard. He's progressing, says Richard. Listen to Richard. Hong Kong Harry, lot 10. Peter Hines gave a pass certificate. Hong Kong Harry... Listen to what Richard Fahey says. He doesn't speak unless he means it. And here's a fella for you. What are we going to do here? How about 300,000 and put me in? 300, 300,000 and put me in. Three, two, one. Anybody get a bit of 100,000 and put me in? 100, come on online, 100. Anybody get a bit of 150? I'm bid. 50,000 now. I got 50,000. That'll be now 50,000. God, 50,000 bid. At 50,000, the opening bid now 60,000 now. At 60,000, that'll be now 70. God, 70,000 now. At 70,000, that'll be now I get 80. But I get 80,000 now. I get 100. At 80,000, that'll be now 80,000 now. At 80,000, this progressive type now at 80,000 now. He knows how to win at 80, 100 bid, 100,000 now. At 100,000, that he been out 100,000 go. At 100,000, that he been out 100,000 now. At 100,010 bid, 110 go. At 110, I got 20 bid, 120 now. At 120 and going this time, then 120 now. At 120, that he been at 120 now, you're out. At 130 back in. At 130, and he been out 130 now. At 130,000, that he been 130, 140, 140 now. At 140, it's all online now, 140 go. At 140,000, he knows. 
knows how to win at 140,000. And Richard Fahey does as well at 140. And he reckons he's got a good chance here at 140,000. That'd have been 140 now. At 140, try the 50. At 140,000, that'd have been 140 now. At 140, that'd have been a 140, 150. Thank you. At 150, that'd have been a 150 now. At 150, and he'd been now 150. Go. At 150, and he'd been now 150. Come on. At 150, and he'd been now 150 now. At 150, 160. 160, go. At 160, but again, now 160 now. At 160 for Hong Kong, Harry. At 160, he's only getting into his stride. At 160. At 160, this progressive type. At 160. At 160, Richard likes 170. At 170, beer. At 170, and he'd been now 170, beer. At 170, Richard loves him. At 170, then he'd been at 170, beer. At 170, do you want him? At 170, even at 170, 180. 180 now. At 180. How about two? At 180. Come on, your old bold, bold bidder. At 180,000, then he'd been at 180 now. At 180, reckon he might just do it. At 180,000, then he'd been at 180 now. At 180, but again, now at 180, go. At 185. At 185. At 185. Well, you can have five as well, the other guy. At 185. At 185. Come on. At 185 and bid. At 185. He knows how to win, said Richard. He's going to do it again, he reckons. At 185. At 185, but goes this time. At 185, and he'll take the five. At 185, if you want. At 185, but do it quick. At 185, and he'll be at 185. Hong Kong, Harry goes then. At 185, and he'll be at 185 now. At 185. My original man is out. At 185 to my second bidder. At 185. Get ready this time then. At 185. Going for the hammer and going now. At 185. All done then. At 185. Then get ready. At 185. We're going to ask her. We're going this time. Hammers up at 185 and goes this time around then. Fair warning at 185,000 pounds and Jack Cantillon. Well done, Jack, and good luck. 185. Yeah, thank you very much. And lot 11 is next. We've just two to go. And here's Andreas Vesalius. He's a two year old by Caravaggio who's made such a good start to his career with his runners. He's a winner last time out at Nace and uh, he heads to the Norfolk. One of Joseph O'Brien's, the third of the four. Give us a bit of an update on him, Kevin. Yeah, he's a lovely colt, this fella, Nick. He, Joseph trains his two-year-olds to improve start to start, and that's just what this fella has done. This was a good conditions race at Navin. He jumped out, made the running. Navin can be quite a tricky track. He got a little bit unbalanced at times, but he was good and strong over the line. He's not just a, a fast two-year-old, Nick. He'll progress. He's a big scopey colt. He'll certainly stay, stay six furlongs, if not seven furlongs, and I think he has his chance in the Norfolk Stakes on Thursday. Yeah, I think the form looks pretty good and we'll have to see what happens. So, as I said, he's a son of Caravaggio and he heads to that. We're not going to hear from Joseph. We're going to go straight to Henry because here's an exciting two-year-old, Andreas. He's the last of the two-year-olds, Henry, and he has a big chance this week. Big chance in the Norfolk. Can't wait to see it. Uh, Burn and Halley, John Hanley says, in my opinion, this, this colt should make a good candidate for racing. He's a lovely colt by the great Caravaggio who's doing so well. All right, what are we going to do here? Big chance in Norfolk. But Joseph O'Brien could be in your colours. Come on and give me what about 500,000 and put me in. 500, 5, 5, 4, 2. What do you want to do? 200, 100 bid. 100,000 now. At 100,000, that'd be now 100,000 go. At 100,000, that'd be now Andres Vesalis. At 100,000, that'd be now 100,000 bid. At 100,000, the Norfolk Stakes entry now for Joseph. At 100,000, that'd be now 100,000 now. At 110 bid. 110 a go. At 110 and 20 bid. 140 now. At 140,000, that'd be now 140 bid. At 140, that'd be now 140 now. At 140 and 50 bid. 150 now. At 150 bid again now. 150 a go. At 150, and it'd be now 150 now. At 150, and it'd be now 150 now. At 150, the Caravaggio. At 150, he's going to do it. At 150, but again now. 150 now. At 155. 155 a go. At 155 and bid. At 155, it'll be now. 155 now. At 155. 160 bid. 165. 165 now. At 165, press the button again. At 165. At 165. Best press you've ever done. At 170. 170 now. At 170, but again now. 170 bid. At 170 and five again. It'll be 180. 180. How about two? At 180. Two, 180. 90, 190 now. At 190, and he'd be now 190 beer. At 190 and 200,000 beer. At 200,000 and five more if you like. At 200,000, then he'd be now 200 now. At 200, the rest of you out now, 200 now. At 200,000, then he'd be now 200 now. The Caravaggio with a big chance in Norfolk. At 200,000, then he'd be now 200 now. At 205, 205 and 10. 
at 210. At 210 and against you. At 210 and it be now 210 and be. At 210 against my visual man now 210 ago. At 210 and it be now 210 now. At 210 the Caravaggio. At 210 in the Norfolk now 210. At 210 a big chance said Kevin. At 210. At 210 he gets a lot right. At 210 I reckon this is one of them. At 210 and be now 210 for your own. At 210 and it be now 210 and be. At 210 but again now 220. 220 and be. At 220. At 220, come on. At 220, but again, now 220. At 220, maybe now 220 beer. At 220, the original bidders are out. At 220, but again, now 220 now. At 220, but again, now 220. I'll take the five if it helps you out there. At 220 now and beer. At 220, maybe now 220 beer. At 220, but going for the hammer, the Norfolk entry. At 220 by Caravaggio. At 220, I think you're running too tightly. At 220, but again, now 220. But goes this time, make no mistake. At 220 against you out there. At 220 this time. At 220, all done, everybody's in. Last call, here we go. At 220, get ready. And at 220, and goes this time. Then at 220,000 against you. At 220, all done. Not sold, I'm afraid. Stays there. Well, before you know it, we're already on to the last slot. And lot 12 was withdrawn, and lot 13 is a wild card entry. A late entry, Belmont Avenue, who's won his only start this year in Dundalk, and is certainly among the contenders for the Britannia. Fourth and final offering from the Joseph O'Brien Yard. Belmont Avenue is the son of Zoffany, who's already had a classic winner in England this year. He's a well-related horse. He's a dams bred a black type winner this year. Tell us a little bit about Belmont Avenue and his chances in the Britannia. He's a lovely colt, Nick. He made a very promising debut at Cork last September, and the run possibly came a little bit too soon for him when he was beaten 10 days after that. But Joseph took his time, brought him back to Dundalk here in April, and as you see, he won very well, particularly strong over the line. That was over a mile. I suspect he'll have no problem with a mile and a quarter in due course. It looks like he'll sneak into the Britannia, and I think the handicapper has been quite fair to him, Nick, so he won't be without a chance. And the analysts, I think, have him a third or fourth favourite for this race, so, I mean... You know, yeah. he's really in there with a major squeak, so... I can definitely see why he, he's prominent in the market, Nick. He, he's not without his chance at all. Yes, well, let's hope that he will be uh, on his way in different colours. Henry, the final horse is lot 13, Belmont Avenue, the son of Zoffany, one for the Britannia. Son of the great, late and much lamented Zoffany. Uh, Belmont Avenue, Auburn Halley, John David Halley from Auburn Halley uh, notes that this horse had a hob day and soft palate cauterization on the 10th of November 2020. And he concludes this asymmetry of the left, arytenoids combined with his reaction to palpation of the left for cannon, in my opinion, present a low to medium risk of affecting future soundness for racing. He has that, sir. It's, uh, Belmont Avenue, uh, Carrigan Og, Joseph O'Brien has an entry. He's highly thought of, as Kevin tells you. This is your last chance. This is your last chance. If you haven't got a runner at Ascot, this is your moment. This is the last chance you have. So start where you will here. Come on and give me what about, uh, well, how about 300,000 and put me in, he's worth it more. 300, anybody get a bit of three, two? Anybody get a bit of 200,000? What about a bit of 100,000 anywhere? 100,000, he's one of the favorites. 100,000 and put me in. 100 and bid. I got 100,000 online now at 100 bid, 100 now. At 100,000, said it be now at 100,000, go. At 100,000, let it be now who goes on now at 100 now. At 100,000, let it be now who goes on now at 100 bid, 100 now. At 100,000, my only bid so far. At 100, no, 110. At 110, and prove me wrong again. At 110, I got 20 bid, I got 120, I got 40 bid, 140 now. At 140,000, let it be now 140, go. At 140, let it be now 140 now. At 140, any bid now 50 bid, 150 now. At 150 bid again now 160, 160 at 160, maybe now 160, 170, 170 beer, 170, maybe now 170, the Bajan, your favorite, at 170, one of them anyway, at 170, 180, 180 now, at 180, how about two, at 180, 190, 190 beer, at 190 online, my second bidder, at 190, 200,000 beer, at 200,000, it's all online, at 200,000, let it be now, any phone bids now, at 200, go, at 200,000, let it be now, 200 now, at 200,000, let it be now, 10, 210 and beer, at 210, and it be now, 210. At 210, the Britannia entry. At 210, that it be now 210 now. At 210, every chance, said Kevin. At 210, that it be now 220. 220 up bit. At 220 bidding at 220. At 220. Come on, time's running out. At 220 bidding and now 220. At 221 an entry. At 220 bidding and now 220. At 220, your last chance to get in the winner's enclosure at Royal Ascot. At 220 bidding and now 220. At 220. 225. 225. Now what do you say? At 225. Press it again. 225. Click of a button, you get there. 225. 230. 230 on beer. At 230, but again now at 230. 230. And 5. 235. 235 on beer. 
at 2.35, come on, at 2.35, any bit now at 2.35, at 2.35, but I'm going for the hammer and going now, at 235, any bit now at 2.35 now, at 2.35, one of the market leaders for the Britannia on Thursday, at 235, the son of the great Zoffany, at 235, at 235, but goes this time, make no mistake, at 235, get ready this time, at 235, the hammer's up, final chance to get to Ascot, at 235, get ready. And at 235, we're going for it this time. Hammers up at 235. Well done, of it is in. Here we go. At 235,000 pounds and afraid not, not sold. Well, thank you, Henry. That actually concludes the selling element of the 2021 Goffs London sale. It's been an online experience like no other. And actually, although we may not have sold all these horses today, we can just hope that the buyers who've bought the horses are proved right and the buyers who left the horses behind that didn't sell will be proved wrong in time and hopefully in a short time because all those horses will be performing on the great stage of Royal Ascot. Kevin, um, your first experience of a Goffs online sale, interesting. You could see the online bids coming in and everything else like that. Yeah, fantastic drama. Lovely to be a part of it. And look, the horses that have changed hands, the very best of luck to their new owners. And the, those that didn't change hands, the very best of luck to their current owners. We, I think there's the horses that we so we didn't quite see them today but the horses that were offered today i think amongst them there are some genuine chances and wouldn't it be great if they added to uh, the role of honor at the london sale well what's interesting about these horses of course is that you know it's it, this, this is a very non-disturbing sale they don't have to come to the mm. sale they never have left their trainers yards uh, and a number of the ones that get bought will perhaps not leave they'll stay on i mean i've got a few notes in there i understand that military mission early on was sold to johnny mckeever but it's signed down to him and gay waterhouse and adrian bott so that's one's obviously heading to australia and i think pornichet went that direction so let's hope that's a success down there we have a monsieur alain jathier bought the uh, tipperary sunset the live contender from the quins let's hope that's a new wow signal early on uh, oliver green all signed with dan asprey for zinc white haven't got the later results in but, you know, these are horses are going to a variety of things. You know, Oliver Greenall might have a dual-purpose career in mind for Zinc White. Mm. It'll be interesting to see. Well, that's it, Nick. We know the world is so small and flat racing now. And these horses can end up anywhere. And like you say, it's a military mission most likely will end up in Australia. And that type of horse with that type of profile tends to do very well down there. So hopefully we'll be looking back this time next year and at uh, what he's achieved in the meantime. Now, we're not in London. We're in an online, unidentified situation, looking very much like the ring in Goffs. But hopefully over in London, our man Mike Catamull is uh, in Daphne's restaurant. And as I said, he's been having a pretty easy time while you and I do all the work. The cat that got the cream, perhaps, uh, Mike. Tell us how you're getting on over there. Yeah, Nick, guilty as charged, by the way. Yeah, I very much so, the cat that got the cream. Um, but it's been fascinating listening on, albeit in troubling circumstances, really, but we're all having a great time here looking at what you've been selling over there at Goffs. Delighted to welcome uh, Hugo Palmer uh, to, the, to our programme, to our broadcast, because you sold one today, uh, Hugo. Lot three came here with a couple of entries at Ascot next week, eventually bound for Down Under. Yes, he's been, he was... Uh, Bought, bought by Johnny McKeever on behalf of Gay Waterhouse, I believe. Um, so, um, yeah, it's, uh, it's great to have come here and to sold him, and uh, I think everyone seems very, very happy. What was the reason you put him in this particular sale, Hugo? Um, I mean, that was led really by by the owners that were that were key. You know, he was always bought as a as a really sort of an investment project. Yeah. Um, and they felt that this moment was a horse on the upgrade. Um, you know, often, you're often better to <laughs> sell, sell while the potential is there for all to see, aren't you? Yeah, obviously, you'd be sad to see him go, but it's great he's got a couple of entries. Obviously, Mrs. Waterhouse isn't awake at the moment, so I guess no, you'll be chatting to her as soon as you can. 11 o'clock at night is one of the few <laughs> moments of the day when Gay isn't actually wide awake. Um, but I'm delighted, having worked for her, of course, I'm delighted that, that, that she bought the horse. And I, early indications are that she's keen to run at the Royal Meeting next week, and I would have right. thought in the George V, okay. um, which he needs half a dozen to come out of, but I think they will. Um, and he gets in on quite a nice weight of 8-8. Eight, eight. Um, and I think uh, that, that's the race, given the choice that I'd run him in. OK. And there's always a little bit of a two-edged thing to this, isn't there? Well, you'd be delighted that it's been sold for, you know, good money and all that, and a bright future down under. But obviously you'd be losing a, a nice progressive young stare. Yeah, absolutely. But, uh, you know, I think everyone involved in British racing is, is conscious of the um, economic necessity 
to, to sell horses, to make money for your owners, and and hopefully the guys that have come in and they've they've had a, they've had a winner and had a good time, and hopefully we've been able to look after them well enough that they, we can we can try something again, find find another gem for 50 grand at Goffs like we did with this horse. <laughs> yeah, well done, well said. <laughs> now, what about Ascot this week? You're going there with some decent chances, particularly at two-year-olds, I thought. Yeah, look, we're, obviously Ascot's the biggest week of the whole year, and it's, it's hugely excited, having really felt, felt we didn't have one last year. Um, so we run two two-year-olds, Ebro River, um, who I have a sort of paternal pride about because he's the he's the first stakes winner by Galileo Gold and was his first winner as well actually. So he he goes to the Coventry where he's sort of joint second favourite with a few others and and how the money comes will depend where he starts. Um, and yeah, no, we're really excited about running him. Uh, and Dig Two in the Windsor Castle stakes later in the week. Yes, absolutely. Dig Two, ju just just one of 28 in the Windsor Castle. Um, I think the great thing I always think you, you either want to be drawn either low or high. There's nothing worse than being bang in the middle and then having that awful decision about which way you go. So, <laughs> Ebro River's drawn one and Dig Two's 25, I think. So, right, okay. Or, or somewhere up there. So yeah. we'll, we'll see. They can't both be badly drawn. I mean, all, you mentioned as well that Ebro River had another uh, engagement. Sorry, Dig Two had another engagement in the Norfolk, but. By the time that race is going to be run, the ground could be significantly different. It could change, indeed. Yeah. It, could, it could change. Um, it's hard, hard, hard to tell quite what's going to happen because the thunderstorms are unpredictable by, unpredictable by their nature. But there definitely could be some give in the ground. You know, having, having won his maiden by nine lengths on very soft ground at Salisbury certainly would be no hindrance to the horse that we've sold here today. Um, if, the, if the rain did come on, on Thursday and it was, it was a slow side of good, um, that, that, wouldn't, that wouldn't hinder military missions chance at all. Perfect. Well said and really well done. Good to see you today. Good luck this week as well. Lovely. Thanks, Mike. Appreciate it, Hugo. That's it from us then. As you say, we've had an easy gig compared to you guys over there, but hey, I'm not complaining. We've got our main course coming up, Nick. We'll be thinking of you as we tuck in. Yeah, well, th thank you, Mike, over there in Daphne's restaurant. Well, we're getting close to the end of the broadcast, but just a few words perhaps from Henry uh, Beebe, CEO of Goffs. Henry, uh, your thoughts on the sale, what's coming up next, and uh, a few thank yous. Well, uh, this has always been a sale like no other, and when we've been asked to judge the sale in the past, people have said, oh, there's a few that haven't sold. The point of this sale is, if people want to cash in before Ascot, they can do. If they choose to hold on to the horse, it won't stop us cheering the horse, uh, horse on. So we're looking forward to the Royal Meeting like everybody else. Can't wait. Wonderful, wonderful five days. And we're sure to see some horses that have passed under our hammer, both here in Goffs and at Goffs UK and Doncaster, are winning as they have done on so many occasions in the past. Our thanks, of course, to our vendors. We've always said we're nothing without the horses. So thank you for supporting the sale. And thank you to every bidder and, of course, the main purchasers that you've mentioned before. Um, and our partners... A sale like no other, the big three who've been with us since the start, uh, Kipco, Selfridges and Chateau Laube. They've ensured every year that we've put on a show like no other and a sale like no other. They've been joined in recent years by Ampado Group, one and only, the International Yacht Company, GBRI, who are co-hosting the lunch with uh, our own Haley O'Connor in Goffs across in London, and Fitztairs have joined us this year. So, what's on now? Well, we'll be glued to the television, those of us who can't get there, watching our Goffs grads, we call them our horses. They're nothing to do with us, really, but we love watching them. When a horse has been under a Goffs gavel, it becomes one of ours, and we shout as loudly uh, as any owners or any connections, and we look forward to seeing them win at the highest level at Royal Ascot. But straight away, Nick and I will be taking off these jackets and ties with the rest of the team, jumping in our cars and herring around the country, uh, as will our team in the UK, uh, looking for the yearlings we're going to offer, uh, the premier yearling sales in Doncaster and the Goffs Orby sale here in September. The Golf Sorby sale is going to be very special this year. If you want to win Europe's richest two-year-old race of 2022, you'll have to come here, you'll have to buy at Kildare Paddocks at the Orby sale because they will be the only candidates for the Golf's Million in September next year. So we're looking forward to that. Thanks to everybody for your interest. Uh, and thanks to Kevin and Mike and, of course, to Nick. Yeah, well, thank you, Henry. We're really close to the end now. I'm just going to ask Kevin before we go, because Kevin will be on uh, ITV this week and be giving the benefit of his opinion and are causing betting markets to tumble everywhere when the sage words emerge from his mouth. Kevin, for those of you who are, who are watching in and may be interested, what horse will you be tipping later in the week that might be a more generous price at this moment? Well, there's one tomorrow, Nick, to get us off to a good start, hopefully, in the Copper Horse Handicap, um, a horse called Global Storm. Uh, I've been quite sweet on this fella for quite some time. I feel I've been targeting this meeting with him. Everything about the race should suit him very well. He's not a huge price, unfortunately, but hopefully he'll be a winner.
Well, Global Storm, he's providently named. We've been through a bit of a global storm the last uh, 16 months, and he'd be a suitable horse to uh, bring proceedings to an end tomorrow. So to everybody who's joined Goffs online or been watching on Goffs.com, thank you very much for participating in this event. We hope that we'll be back live in Kensington Palace Gardens next year for the Goffs London sale and with all our partners on board. And Henry mentioned one of those partners, Chateau Leu, who make a particularly good... Uh, rosé wine that I'm always fond of having a glass of after the normal London sales and I'm rather hoping I might be able to find a glass of it somewhere around here after the cameras stop rolling. So for those of you who bought and those of you who sold, the best of luck at Ascot this week and we'll see you here in Goffs hopefully in the autumn for the Premier sales at Doncaster and the Orby sale here in Ireland. Thank you.